Hi, good morning you guys. Um, I'm going to um, have a cup of coffee on this one so if you guys need something to drink um, or snack on while I do this video um, I advise you to get a cup of coffee also because um, I'm not for sure how this one's gonna go. I'm still gonna um, talk about what I was planning on talking about um, weight loss surgery versus traditional weight loss but my life and circumstances have taken a slight turn this week um, and a loved one is sitting in ICU um, at this very moment that I'm talking to you and I need to get ready to go um, back to the hospital. We've been at the hospital and ICU constantly um, since Monday and um, he's very ill right now and you guys it definitely has everything to do with his eating and his lifestyle. Um, so it's kind of playing a big part and I had really thought about not doing this video today and if you guys are newbies here please um, if you're just new to having weight loss surgery or if you're thinking about it, please stay tuned and watch this because it's definitely going to be relevant for you. Um, but you just kind of have to get through this little life emotion. And you guys, I, I don't change anything on here on YouTube. I'm not making it fake. This is my real life and my real journey. So you guys get me really how I am. Um, you guys, diabetes type 1 and type 2 definitely comes from lifestyle and diet. Um, doctors do want to say that type, um, I always forget the numbers, um, the type 1 diabetes is not so much diet related as more hereditary. And my thought on this and research on it is, yes, it is hereditary, but it's probably hereditary because of the lifestyle that generations pass down to generations um, and so it probably starts changing their chemistry makeup you know um, and it definitely impacts their habits of how they eat how they live how they deal with stress you guys we inherit that from our our family members because I know my sisters and brother my my sister and brother we all act alike and we kind of deal with stress very similar and I see it in my kids. So I know those are traits and things that we pass down. Um, genetically, you know, um, I still think our genetics can morph and transform and, you know, re, I don't know if the word is regenerate, but you know, they, they um, what's the word, evolve. I think our genetics evolve over the years, the centuries of what we're passing down in the bloodline to one another and it starts making things change. You guys, we're eating a lot of chemicals. We're eating fake, what we call food. It's not food. It's fake chemicals um, to look like food, <laughs> okay? And so I personally believe, now that I'm not a doctor, I don't claim to be, I'm not a dietitian, even though I have a lot of hours, I'm only a few hours away from being certified. Um, I truly believe those things are passed down and it, like I said, it makes things evolve within our, our genetics. And that's why certain families, certain people are predisposed to um, things because of that lifestyle that's been passed down for generations. So with that said, you guys, this is a, he's in his 20s, um, late 20s, mid to late 20s. Um, and he's he was lying in the hospital all this week fighting for his life. I did get good news and I'm, I'm happy to run up there this morning to see him because I did get good news on him. So he's going to survive. He is definitely a fighter. Um, so I'm so proud of him for that. And it, this is going to be a victory. And it, it has been a warning and a wake up for everybody who dearly loves him that diet and lifestyle is very important. So with that said, you guys, traditional weight loss versus weight loss surgery, which is better, okay? And my personal belief on it 
is the best thing is the best thing for you not what anyone else thinks you guys and if you can do it traditionally I applaud you you guys and that is not being funny or fictitious because I have lost over 78 pounds the traditional way um, myself and I have lost weight 30 40 50 pounds before using diet pills um, I've tried like many of you everything to lose weight and I was on a total roller coaster ride you know from being vegan and vegetarian and raw vegan for years you guys years in and out of that and gaining weight on that um, to losing weight like I said on diet pills um, traditionally I've done it all you guys I've you know I'm not just a spring chicken here so I've been around for a while and I've had time time to try different things and um, hold different jobs and positions and volunteer and you know I, and I'm, I'm a very curious person so I look to do many things I don't feel like I'm here on this earth to just do one thing or work at one job I, I want to be more creative than that I'm more inquisitive than that and I don't have a problem with that and they used to call me a jack of all trades but that's okay I'll, I'll take that I, if I know a little bit of something about everything then I know I've experienced a lot in my life so I'll, I'll live with no regrets um, and I carry that throughout my whole life as far as working fun entertainment anything like that you, you know I try things I like I like trying things and discovering new things but anyway um I know this video is gonna be all over the place you guys just deal roll with it like I said you know leave with it <laughs> and just speed through the parts that you you want to go through so that's my disclaimer so anyway um I have been through lots of things trying to lose weight and maintain it and I have watched people do this from me even being a personal trainer at Gold's Gym and I've actually trained at three different gyms. Um, there was one called Life, I forget what it was, it wasn't Lifetime but it was another Life something that was here in the the Dallas Fort Worth area and um, at the YWCA I, I was a trainer there um, and back at when it was it wasn't Gold's it was called um, not Bally's I can't think of the name of it anyway um, they actually asked me to become a trainer and they would certify me um, if I would because they were so impressed at how much weight I lost and how tone I and muscular I had created my body back you know when I was younger um, and so I, I was a trainer for a while um, right before real estate and then a couple of years into real estate I balanced both of those careers together and so I've seen a lot of people lose weight just to gain it right back you guys so I'm one of those I would have had to be on my grind day in day out hustling humping to keep that weight off not only a good diet I had to exercise you guys so that for me wasn't a lifestyle that I could see a pace that I could see myself keeping up with with the long term I'm a stressful eater I'm a happy eater which means if I'm stressing I'm eating if I'm happy and celebrating something I'm eating I'm an emotional eater so whatever type of emotions I'm having at that moment will trigger me to eat boredom if I'm sitting on the couch by myself watching TV no lie even now every time a commercial comes on I can go to the refrigerator you guys now I'm not what I call myself fat girl even though I'm in a size 4 I still feel like I have a fat girl mentality and if that offends anybody I'm sorry but I'm just calling a spade a spade and this is what I call myself and for me it's not derogatory me and my girls laugh about it um, it's it's a pet name for us it's it's a cute name and we say that sometimes to recognize that we're doing some of our old habits and so that's the way we trigger one another to think about what we're doing um, so it's it's how you take things you guys it's that makes it 
sticks or stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, which is a lie. Words can hurt, but it depends on how you process those words. So for me, fat girl, not derogatory. And so I know I still have her in me and I have to watch it. Um, the surgery helps watch it. The her surgery helps keep me on track or I can even say even when I'm off track, the surgery tends to help me come back. Even if it's just remembering, Lisa, you didn't go through all this. You didn't pay all that money to go back to doing what you did before. You guys, what's the, what's the number one thing of knowing insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting to get different results, right? So if we want the results of being smaller people, healthier people, then we have to change what we did because if we go back to doing what we used to do, we're going to end up with those same results again. That's insane. That's insanity. So, you know, weight loss for me was the answer. Weight loss surgery for me was the answer. Weight loss surgery for the next person may not be the answer. I came through it with flying colors. Did I have a little couple of little hiccups? Yes, I did. Some of the things I experienced in the hospital was severe nausea um, right after the surgery. I was throwing up so bad that, and it was met mostly that their pain medicine in Mexico was making me throw up. Um, and so bad, my daughter wouldn't even take the pain medicine when they came in and asked her if she was in pain, even though she was. She said, no, I'm good. I'm good. Because she's seen how it was making me throw up violently and she didn't want any parts of it. So once I got past that, which only lasted that first um, night, I, I want to say, once I got past that, I got a, a small infection in one of my incisions. Not because my surgeon did something wrong, because I did something wrong. I kept picking with, at it. I was putting healing, um, like scar healer, on it too soon um, before it had actually healed. And the doctors here in the state said they think that probably seeped in and caused an infection. And I might have even taken my stitches out too early. So I had my stitches removed too early. So you guys, those are the things that I did that created a little bit of complication. But other than those things, I flew through that surgery with color, uh, flying colors. It didn't bother me. Will that happen for everybody? No, everybody's body's different. Everybody process things different. Everybody stress out about things different. And even if you're stressing, can make your surgery go quite different because in a stress state, your immune system is down. So you're going to heal and respond totally different than someone who's going in there saying, oh, I'm ready for this. I got this. I'm coming through it. You know, it, it, it all plays a part in our healing and how we're going to handle things. So if you know you're good to go like that and you're pretty much healthy, and you need the surgery because you've tried everything in the past and you can't either lose the weight or you can't keep it off, um, you're not changing your habits, then I think weight loss surgery has been an incredible tool for us to use. You guys, is it, is it the easy way out? I don't know. But what I tell you, this is what I do say. I know human beings will take the easiest simple route to get to from point A to point B. That's in our nature. Anything we do, we tend to do that. Um, I've said this before. Math equations have a short equation and a long form. Which one are you going to do are you just to get the same answer if you can use either? If your teacher say you can do it the long form or the short, you're going to do the short. You're going to take the simplest route to get to the destination or the outcome that you're seeking. So that I know. If you're, if you're going on vacation and there's a long route that'll get you there and then there's a shorter route that gets you to your same destination for vacation, you're going to take the shorter route. And I've even seen my father do this and I've done it since I've been an adult. From um, going from Texas to California, there's a short route and there's a long route. The short route takes you through some cliffs and mountains that are very treacherous and scary. But guess what? My dad has driven them and I've driven it too because I wanted to get to my destination faster. So I took the more dangerous route to get home. And so many people take that route 
from Texas to California through those winding mountains that are one way. And if you get caught in the rain on those mountains, it's, it's the most scariest thing in the world. So we will do that. We will risk things to get our answer, to get to our destination. And the other day I was thinking, I said, I wonder if someone who had to lose weight and they wanted to do it the natural way. If somebody said, I'll give you a million dollars if you go ahead and have the surgery, would they have it then? I guarantee you, nine times out of 10, they would take the money and have the surgery to get the same results that they were going to get the traditional way because now the money's involved. Why is the money the motivator? They're going, they're going to say, well, a million dollars would change my life. That's how I feel about weight loss. I didn't care how I got it. If it was money that motivated me, if it was whatever, me not being able to wear certain things, me not having per good health, you know, me worrying about I'm going to die like my mom did in my 40s. You know, she was in her 40s when she passed away from congestive heart failure, you guys. So I don't care what motivated me to save my own life or to extend my own life to live a better quality life. Whatever the motivating factor was, that's what motivated me. So you have to find that in you. There are pros and cons to both. Is weight loss surgery probably the most dangerous of the two? As far as, yes, things could go wrong in surgery. Yes, it is. But especially for the ones who are having health problems and the ones that are severely obese, which evil is greater? Dying, dying slowly or quickly because now that I see that my loved one is in the hospital and he's in his 20s, it can be quicker than you think. We just think it's dying slowly. You don't know how your body's going to react to being overweight or eating wrong constantly. So dying from being overweight or giving yourself a fighting chance and dying on the table. Okay. And you guys, I'm saying it point blank like that. Do people die on the table? Yes, they do. do. Do it happen very often? No, it doesn't. Okay, and nine times out of ten when that does happen, it's typically something already wrong that they may not have disclosed, you know. So, and people do that all the time because they want something so desperately, they don't tell the doctor everything that's wrong. So, you guys, there, let me say this too, with traditional weight loss, I won't say it's natural as they're calling it here all across the internet because the majority of people, including bodybuilders, trainers, and all of that who's touting do it naturally, they have, if you go into their cabinets, they have a host of all kind of synthetic products that they bought off the internet, off of multi-level marketing, saying this is the magic way to do it. Um, they take drink shakes, they drink these drinks that's supposed to help build muscle tone, all that stuff. You guys, the majority of them don't even know what's in that mess that they're taking. They hear somebody say they got good results or they're doing it because of multi-level marketing to make money and they're pushing that stuff. And long term, they don't know what effect that has on their body because they're not, the majority of them, almost all of them, <laughs> are not chemists so they don't know how their body's going to respond to all those different drinks that they drink and i don't know what all of them are some of them are protein some of them are not the majority of them though are synthetic are man-made and anything man makes you guarantee that's not a natural product most of the time now we do have companies that are coming out and they're ethical and they're making all natural based products if you guys are using something like that fine but read the fine lines make sure you know what's in that stuff even if they say it's 100 percent natural they lie okay and that has been proven many many a times so they use diet pills they use fat burners they use thermogenics they use all that kind of stuff so it's not as natural as they're touting it to be so if the if they're touting truly natural 
then go for it. If you can do it natural, you can keep it off, you can stick to it, you can change your mindset, then by all means, go for it. I just know for me and all these other people that are overweight out here, a lot of them know about nutrition because it's been on their mind all their life and we have studied it. A lot of them don't because they were taught this is what you eat and they think it's right. I'm trying to reach some of those people because one thing with me, even though I was overweight, I always ate right pretty much all my life. Do I have cheap meals and sweets and snacks and stuff from time to time? I do. I do. When I'm stressing, I can even have it a lot sometimes, you guys, um, or during that time. But anyone who truly knows me knows that I pretty much eat really well and always have. So that lets you know even when I was raw, I overate. So it lets you know that food is still um, energy, calories. So no matter what you do, if you overdo it, you're still going to become overweight. Now, the one good thing about being eating more healthy foods, you're getting more of your vitamins, your nutrients, and your minerals. So your body can probably fight whatever you're doing to it a little bit better than if you're filling up on chips, cakes, hot dogs, you know, that type of stuff, then not only are you getting overweight, but you're not giving your body the nourishment to help fight anything that happens to it. So you guys, I'm just trying to say, and I hope you understand and I'm not too all over the place. I'm just trying to say that weight loss is a choice. They, it all comes with bad and good because if you do it naturally and when I say naturally traditional I mean no processed stuff no man-made bottle shakes whatever cookies protein cookies all that mess if you truly do it naturally and traditionally and you can do your exercise you can keep your portions under control and you can change your mindset and not go back then by all means do it the traditional way whichever way my thing is whichever way you have to get from point a to point b do it and try to do it safely um, be informed read talk to more than one doctors one doctor multiple doctors um, get on the internet read as much as you can don't believe everything on the internet but still put all the pieces together and see how many of them are making sense, you know, and are like-minded, making sense. And it makes sense to you in your spirit. It makes sense. You guys, whichever way you do it, do it and do it with the mindset of there's no turning back. I'm not insane. I'm not going to do the things that kept me the way I was before. I see so many people on the internet right now who've had the surgery or I shouldn't say so many, but there's a few you guys out there who who's had the surgery and they're posting the food that they eat on YouTube, on Instagram, on Snapchat, whatever, wherever, they're, um, Facebook, they're fo posting food that is not healthy. You know, they say they don't want to be on the forums because people on there are like food patrol. They tell you you shouldn't be eating that. Well, you shouldn't. And that's why a lot of us still get flack here about having weight loss surgery. It's because the general public believes we're a joke that you can put your body and your life in that much risk and then you go back doing the things that you used to do that got you there in the first place. I think that's a joke. I think that's an insult. That makes you feel like, no, I don't want to tell anybody I had the surgery because that's how they look at us, you know? So we, it, and the biggest thing is putting that in for wrong information out here for other people who don't understand or who are not, not in, um, in the know yet to know better and to make them think that it's okay because you're still a size three or four and you're eating this way. You guys, that's so wrong. Did you have the surgery just to get skinny and to look pretty and look cute? Okay, what did you have the surgery for? Yeah, I want to look good. And you guys know I've said that from the beginning. But that wasn't my primary purpose for doing this. That wasn't my only purpose. 
my, my, my purpose was to make sure I was healthy and I wasn't killing myself and I wasn't going to die early like my mom. My mom. The, you know, one of my things were, I wanted to feel better. I wanted to stop walking and being out of breath. You know, I, I wanted that. I wanted to exercise and not be so out of breath and sweating so bad that I stopped exercising after two days because I didn't want to feel like that anymore. I wanted my joints to stop hurting, you guys. I wanted to be able to eat regular portions. You know, I wanted to be able to do that. Um, yes, I wanted to look good. I wanted to feel good. So you guys think about really the reason you did this. And if your only reason was to get fine, then put that out there. Put that disclaimer out there so people know not to watch your channel if that's not their only thing that they're looking to do. Put that disclaimer out there, you guys. If you don't care if you're skinny and unhealthy, cool. Then do you, boo. Do you. But for the ones who want to be healthy and fit, you know, look good, great because I do think it takes all of it mentally physically emotionally it takes the whole thing to move us to the next level and you guys this journey is a long time the mind transformation is not going to happen overnight and when I say overnight it may be years before our, our mind catches up with our new bodies and our new lifestyle and every day I notice things about me that I couldn't see before when I was just cramming food in, you know, and stuffing my feelings. You know, now I can see them. I recognize them. Um, I heard someone say something about she was afraid that to have the surgery, she wouldn't be able to gulp her water anymore like she loved water and like if it was a hot day she wanted to gulp water or any soft drink or fizzy drink that she wanted and she said that scared her that she wasn't going to be able to do that anymore I've heard people say I'm afraid to do this and I want to I think they call it like a, a food funeral or bariatric surgery funeral or something I think right before their surgery they're trying to eat everything they want to eat because they're not going to be able to ever eat it again that's not true this surgery only stops you from eating certain things for a moment in time slowly you go back to eating pretty much anything you want there are some things that still are irritants but pretty much you can eat anything you want and it just gives you a, a time frame to try to wrap your head around it, get settled that you want to change yourself, your life, and to start making those little changes in progress. We have to think about this. We have to think about our choices, you guys, and decide that we want to make a change for us, for our loved ones for our future loved ones. Um, I feel like I'm all over the place today because my brain is kind of running thinking about my loved one. And um, I'm trying not to cry here, y'all. thinking about my struggles, my daughter's struggles. My daughter deals with grave disease and grave disease and pox. I think it's called pox. Um, all that can be mostly managed through diet. Um, a lot of diseases and disorders we get is because of diet and lifestyle, stress, that type of stuff. And even when I was overweight, you guys, I was always passionate about this and wanting to teach people and teach myself how to eat right. Um, I just didn't understand that my struggle wasn't about eating the correct foods. Mine was about eating how much food I was eating and how often. I, I still eat often. I eat about every hour and a half to two hours. I just have to watch my portion control, portion sizes. Um, but my passion was to teach people, especially African Americans, how to eat healthy. 
because we think we do sometimes just because it's vegetables and stuff but the way we prepare them is very unhealthy with all the lard and fat and stuff like that um, that's been a passion of mine to teach people that because I do believe more of a plant-based diet is the way to go um, but I don't think it's for everybody I think a lot of us are different and we thrive on different things you know I just sent a post out today to someone that um, there's some people who are actually allergic to some plant plant foods you know plant-based foods and it they can be actually life-threatening for them if they ingest them so everybody's not designed the same created the same so we have to be mindful of that and not shove things down people's throat i don't want to shove weight loss surgery down anyone's throat and i don't want them shoving anything else down mine either their their philosophy or their beliefs i can hear them but don't tell me that that's the only way and that's the way i should go because i'm the only one who can decide what i should do for lisa um and if i choose wrong then I just shoot all over myself, right? So that's it. But at least it's me doing it and not somebody else. So that's the, the key. This is your journey. This is your journey. This is my journey. And no one can live it for you. Um, people need to mind their business and live their own journeys. But uh, we don't mind our own business, including me. I like to tell other people what to do sometimes too. So I guess that's just in us. But you guys... I, I'm so sorry if this is all over the place, but my thoughts aren't real cohesive now. I'm, I'm saddened. I'm angry. Um, I'm hopeful. Not only for my loved one, but for you guys out here who's thinking about doing the surgery or who's been hanging in here with me for the last three years because you've had the surgery already and we, we're learning this stuff as we go and we're just staying strong and supporting each other. I get angry that other YouTubers, Instagram, whatever people kind of bash us, you know, and I wanna fight for us and protect us and protect you because I don't think some of the things they say is always accurate or fair. They don't know your struggle. They don't know your journey, nor do they know mine. And you can't be or use guerrilla scare tactics to make somebody change. You love them through their change. You love them through their journey. You give them the information and you let them process it. My youngest daughter didn't want to have the surgery for six months, but I had to love her through her fear. And when she was ready, she came to me. And she has told me that was the best thing she ever did in her life. That genetic stuff I was talking about, genetically, the women in my life are, in my family, are predisposed to being obese. All my aunties, my mother, all of us struggled. And when I tell you obese, obese, um, struggle with weight. And every one of them died from something that was weight related. Me and my sister chose not to go that route. Now, my sister haven't had surgery. She, she loses weight um, the traditional way, and she'll be the first to tell you she gains it back, and she has to lose it again, and she's been doing it for years. But for her, that's the way she has to go with it. And if that's the way she goes, I support her. And I try to get her to start a YouTube channel all the time because she has good information, and I'm proud of her for that, you know? And she supports me in my, my journey, even though it's not one that she would have done. She still supports me and she understands. So that's how you change things, you guys. You come together in love and support. And you put the correct and good information out there. It's not about trying to be the most knowledgeable, trying to be 
um, the smartest, the, you know, the, whatever, the know-it-all or be first or be better. It's not about that. If we're really trying to help, it's just really about loving and supporting one another. So I don't know if this was on topic of traditional versus weight loss surgery. I hope it was just enough to see more of our struggle and why somebody would decide to go that route. And there's way more to this, you guys. And I know as the months go on and I continue to film, you're going to hear more of it. There's so much more. And that's why it was so hard for me to focus and get this all out today because there's so many moving parts to our journeys that it's hard to put it in a quick video, even if your video is 30 minutes. It's so hard to put, put this out there and get people to understand and see. And it's not just one thing. Sometimes it's multiple things that have gotten you to the point where you want weight loss surgery. It's, it's deeper than that. I'm sorry, y'all. My journey is deeper than that. I just haven't shared it all. Not yet. I don't know if I'll ever share all of it. But I promise to give you guys more. And to always be real. I told you that from back in 2013. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. And now I've added the pretty, too. Because I was... Some is more prettier than good. One thing I think is pretty, it's not good, it's pretty, it's beautiful. I go to weight loss support groups and to hear some of the stories of women say, I didn't have to buy two plane tickets because I could sit in one seat now. That's beautiful, you guys. And no one could um no one could ever understand how that might feel to someone unless they had to live through it. I've never gotten that large, so I don't even know what that feels. But because I have experienced things from being overweight, people saying things, doing things, things I couldn't do, I can I can try to imagine it and I can get pretty close, but I still can't get there. So to me, that's pretty. That's beautiful. So that's what I mean when I say the good, bad, ugly. Maybe I should say in the beautiful, not the pretty. The beautiful. So I'm going to stop this video right here, you guys, because I think I'm just rambling and I'm going to be a boohoo baby like I always am. I don't know what my face looks like right now, but... Um, so... I just ask you guys to pray for us. Let's stay in here and get these numbers up, you guys, because I'm serious. You know, I, I tease and laugh and talk a lot of mess. But if we can get these numbers up so I can start touching people. I don't even know. This may be why God has me here. Because it's changed my outlook. And me and my youngest daughter talked about it. And my kids hear the things I say. And it's hard for me to say it on camera. But I think as I get used to this and I get used to opening up, you guys are going to hear a lot of my thoughts, philosophy, teaching, stuff I've learned. So I ask you to stay with me. Pass it around. Let's help get these numbers up. And you guys ask me questions because I would I like to do a Q&A so I know what you guys want to know about me or about the surgery, or about my journey, anything. So if you guys will start asking the questions, I'll start accumulating them. And when I get enough to do a Q&A video, I'm going to do that. So until then, you guys, stay focused, stay strong, and you know my saying, body rock on.